Okay, hello everyone. I am Christopher and I am an engineer uh, working on the open source service mesh called Kuma. Uh, I'm a bit jet lagged, but I'm excited to talk to you folks. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, for those of you that never heard about Kuma, uh, it is a service mesh and it does all of the service mesh stuff that you would expect, uh, like security, observability, advanced routing, resiliency, and so on. Uh, in addition to that, we do our best to try to make it very easy for you to run in multiple clouds, in multiple clusters, and even run multiple meshes inside one Kuma installation. We also try to make the experience of running Kuma on Kubernetes um, the same as running on VMs. So it's really similar and it's easy for you. And um, we try to make it very easy for you to use all of the advanced features of Envoy. Uh, that being said, we've just released version 2.9.0 like last week, and we're really happy about that. There, there are numerous uh, improvements in there and some new features like Mesh TLS, uh, Mesh Services, Namespace Policies, and we also have a GUI that comes out of the box. And we uh, continue to modernize the GUI and to work on features there. Uh, as you can see, this is the data plane view on the right side that was recently implemented there. All right, so let's dive into it. Um, namespace policies. So up until 2.9, uh, the policies in Kuma were global, and now uh, we've made them namespace. So if you want to play around with something like a retry or a timeout or anything like that, uh, you can basically create a namespace, then apply, to, uh, apply those policies in the namespace, and when you're done and you remove the namespace, everything is cleaned up, and you don't have to worry about like leaving stuff around. And we have two types of, uh, of those namespace policies. One of them is a producer policy, and those are the policies that are in the same uh, namespace as the target resource. Uh, and this is mostly for like the creators of APIs to give um, the clients of your uh, APIs uh, sensible defaults. So if I create an API and I know that a good default uh, for a timeout would be five seconds, then by default all of the clients will get uh, that, five stick, uh, that five seconds. And there are also consumer policies, and these are policies that are created on the same namespace as the client. So if I want to, uh, for, if I know that I want to retry a request to this particular API five times instead of the two times that are the default, I can do that. And uh, as a consequence of that, the, um, the configuration of consumer policies overrides the uh, producer policies configuration. Okay, the next thing uh, that I want to talk about is Mesh Service. Uh, this is an object that allows you to uh, select a set of data plane proxies and the traffic that is sent to it. Uh, it is a replacement for the Kuma.io slash service tag, uh, which means that it scales way better than that. And uh, you can also add metadata to, uh, to the service itself, not to the underlying proxies, uh, which is uh, way better. And uh, one crucial difference between this and the Kumayo service tag is that in multi-zone scenario, Kumayo service would uh, load balance between different zones, and in mesh service, it will stay within one zone. And if you want to um, consume services from different zones, you can use Mesh Multi-Zone Service. And on top of that, we have a cost name generator to create custom host names. Uh, the next thing is Mesh Pass-Through and Mesh External Service. This is for ac uh, accessing external resources. Mesh Pass-Through, only uh, there's no traffic manipulation. Mesh External Service, you can apply policies on top of that. Uh, last but not least, uh, mesh TLS, which allows you to gradually roll out strict TLS mode and modify some of the TLS parameters like version, cipher suits, and mode. That's all from me. Thank you very much. Go visit kuma.io and have a great conference.